When we work on Neumann projection problems, our main goal is to take a skeletal structure and correctly visualize what it looks like when we are looking straight down a specific carbon-carbon bond. These questions almost always ask for the most stable and least stable conformations. That means we need to think about three things, which bond we're looking down, which carbon is in front and which is in back, and what the largest substituents are on each carbon. Remember, the most stable Newman projection will always be in a staggered conformation with the largest groups anti to each other, meaning 180 degrees apart. The least stable will always be an eclipse conformation where the largest groups are lined up directly with each other. The steps will follow for every problem are the same. Draw the skeletal structure and label the carbons in the parent chain. Identify the two carbons in the bond we're looking down and decide which is in the front and which is in the back. Convert the skeletal structure into a wedge and dash model for those two carbons. Rotate that into the Newman projection, placing the substituents correctly at 120 degree bond angles. Identify the largest substituent on each carbon. Draw the most stable projection, largest groups are anti-staggered, and draw the least stable projection, largest groups are eclipsed. One last reminder, if you see a skeletal structure that doesn't explicitly show all four bonds to a carbon, those bonds still exist. The missing ones are almost always hydrogens, and they need to be included when you draw the wedge and dash model in the Newman projection. We'll go through each example slowly so you can see the exact reasoning. Let's start with the first one. We have, for each of the following, draw the most stable and least stable Newman projections. Butane relative to the C2-C3 bond. First, we will draw the skeletal structure for butane and label the carbons in the parent chain. Butane has four carbons. We will be looking down the bond for C2 and C3, with C2 in the front and C3 in the back. I need to convert this skeletal structure into a wedge and dash model, so using the second and third carbon, I will find the base for the wedge and dash model. The base will have a bond going up on C2 and down on C3, or vice versa, for the most stable stagger conformation. Next, I will draw the wedges and dashes on C2 and C3. For a wedge and dash model, the middle carbons will show two solid lines, one wedge, and one dash. C2 and C3 do not have any substituents other than hydrogens and methyl groups, so the wedge and dash on both will be hydrogens. If a carbon does not show a total of four bonds on a skeletal structure, it still has those four bonds, the hydrogens are just not drawn in. On the front carbon C2, the Y is facing upwards, so my Newman projection in the front will have the Y facing upwards, with all bonds radiating out at 120 degree bond angles. The back carbon will have the Y facing downwards. When looking down the C2-C3 bond from the right hand side, and we rotate the wedge and dash model to be looking straight down the C2-C3 bond, the wedges will be on the right and the dashes will be on the left. On the front carbon, CH3 is at the bottom and the H's are at the top left and top right. On the back carbon, the CH3 is at the top and both H's are at the bottom left and bottom right. This is one of our Newman projections. For one compound, there will be a total of six Newman projections where we alternate between eclipsed and stagger conformations by rotating one carbon front or back 60 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise until we reach a full 360 degree rotation. We can draw all six Newman projections for more complicated structures. For this Newman projection, we do not have many substituents on the front and back carbons. And when I say we don't have many substituents, I mean that we don't have many substituents that are larger groups besides hydrogen. Even though hydrogen can contribute to strain, it is the smallest element that we can have, and it's going to be easiest to ignore hydrogen when looking at the most stable and least stable Newman projections. We're going to focus on larger groups besides hydrogen to make the process efficient when we're trying to compare the Gauche anti and eclipsed conformations. On the front carbon, the largest group we have is a methyl, and on the back carbon, the largest group we have is a methyl. For the most stable Newman projection, the largest groups will be anti to each other, in the stagger conformation. In our present Newman projection, the methyls are anti to each other, so this is the most stable Newman projection. For the least stable Newman projection, the largest groups will be eclipsed to each other in an eclipse conformation. Here are some practice problems that you can try. Draw the most stable Newman projection for propane relative to the C1-C2 bond, and for butane, 
Draw the Neumann projection where the two methyl groups are gauged to each other and label whether it is more or less stable than the antiform. For our next example, we're still going to draw the most stable and least stable Neumann projections. This time, it will be 1-chloropropane relative to the C1-C2 bond. First, we will draw the skeletal structure for 1-chloropropane and label the carbons in the parent chain. This molecule has three carbons with chlorine on C1. We will be looking down the bond between C1 and C2 with C1 in the front and C2 in the back. I need to convert this skeletal structure into a wedge and dash model. So using the first and second carbon, I will find the base for the wedge and dash model. The base will have a bond going up on C1 and down on C2 or vice versa. Next, I will draw the wedges and dashes on C1 and C2. For a wedge and dash model, the middle carbons will show two solid lines, one wedge, and one dash. On C1, the substituents are chlorine, two hydrogens, and C2. On C2, the substituents are a methyl, two hydrogens, and C1. On the front carbon C1, the Y is facing downwards. So my Neumann projection in the front will have the Y facing downwards with all bonds radiating out at 120 degree bond angles. The back carbon will have the Y facing upwards. When looking down the C1-C2 bond from the right hand side and rotating the wedge and dash model so we are looking straight down the C1-C2 bond, the wedges will be on the right and the dashes will be on the left. On the front carbon, CL will be at the top with the H's at the bottom left and bottom right. On the back carbon, the methyl group will be at the bottom, with H's at the top left and top right. For the most stable Neumann projection, the largest groups, CL on the front carbon and the methyl group on the back carbon, will be anti to each other in the stagger conformation. For the least stable Neumann projection, these two largest groups will be eclipsed in an eclipse conformation. When comparing sizes for Neumann projection stability, Alkyl groups are generally larger than halogens because they have more atoms and take up more space in a three-dimensional way. Alkyl groups like methyls and ethyls have hydrogens that are constantly rotating on those carbons, so they're going to be larger due to this free rotation of all the single bonds when comparing it just to one element like a halogen. Halogens are still larger than hydrogen, so eclipsing a halogen with a methyl group is less stable than eclipsing it with hydrogen. 